Do these look like killers to you? Probably not. To you, they're common foods that are likely found in every kitchen in America. But to 15 million kids and adults who are allergic to them, they are potentially deadly. So why are so many people now allergic to so many foods? We're going to find out as we shed some light on these killer food allergies right now on It's Your Call. Of all the things you worry about harming your kids, you might not think food could be a killer, but for many, it is. And the scary thing is, you don't usually know what's dangerous until after it's been eaten. Hello everyone, it's good to have you with us. I'm Lynn Doyle, and this subject is near and dear to my heart because I have a food allergy. And until you've had an allergic reaction, been rushed to the hospital, maybe even been injected with an EpiPen, you don't realize how serious and frightening it can be. But according to the Centers for Disease Control, as many as 15 million adults and children in the U.S. have experienced it. More than 200 deaths occur each year due to food allergies, and these numbers are expected to rise. In fact, we've seen an increase in the number of child allergy cases of nearly 50% between 1997 and 2011. Dr. Terry Brown Whitehorn sees this routinely in her work as a pediatric allergist at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and as a member of the Medical Advisory Board for Kids with Food Allergies, which is a division of the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America. It's good to have you with us. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad that we're able to shed light on this because we hear about food allergies, but we don't quite understand it. So maybe you could explain to us from a medical perspective what a, a true food allergy is. So there's many kinds of food allergies, but the most common, the one we see the most, are the children or adults who eat a food and immediately have hives, swollen lips, breathing problems, or they throw up a lot. And that would be very frightening for the very first time that you've ingested something. Does it just happen in small infants the first time that they've tried a food, or can it happen at any point in your life? It can happen at any point in your life, but mostly, I would guess, toddlers, little ones, um, have the problem at first. And boy, that's got to be scary for those parents when you see your child having that reaction. It is very scary. They don't, they don't necessarily know what to do. They call their pediatrician, they go to an emergency room, and they're treated. And are there various levels or degrees of allergies? Is that possible? <laughs> Can you have a slight allergy? <laughs> so I think there's always a potential for a worse reaction, but we've had children who have hives and every time they have the food they may have hives, or there are kids who have hives maybe with the first exposure, and then if they're exposed again with maybe an increasing amount, they can have a more severe reaction. We're looking at eight foods that account for 90% of all reactions. These are milk, eggs, peanuts, soy, wheat, tree nuts, fish, and shellfish. These are things that we routinely eat on a, on a regular basis. So if your child is allergic to it, I mean, it could really impact what you have in your kitchen, couldn't it? it? It definitely does. And we have some families where one child is allergic to milk, per se, and another child who's allergic to soy. So for those families, it's even more challenging. So let's talk about the difference between allergies and intolerance. Because when I see milk, I think, oh, well, you hear that term lactose intolerant that people don't uh, enjoy or can't process dairy, is that considered a food allergy or is that an intolerance or just a dislike? So lactose deficiency or lactase deficiency is an actual enzyme problem where you can't break down the sugar in the milk. Children with food allergies to milk, the classic IgE mediated kind, they react to the milk protein itself. So why then is it so serious if, if you learn that your child or even yourself has a food allergy, what's, what's the potential end game? So what we try to prevent is actually what the title is called, this killer food allergies. We try to prevent children from having terrible allergic reactions, but there are a few deaths or there are deaths that do occur. So that is what the biggest concern is. And although families have to avoid food, children have to avoid food, there's always a potential chance of a cross-reactive cross-reaction or cross-contamination is what I mean um, from a food. So if one child has it in your family, does that necessarily mean that all children are going to have it? No, not no? necessarily. And it also depends on the type of food. Um, some foods 
uh, there's an increased risk for a second child to have a food allergy, but it's never 100%. Okay. Why do you think it is, in your opinion, that certain foods do cause these problems? Has there been research into why they're so problematic? I think because they're, there's a couple things. One, they're probably stable proteins. Uh, they have to be common in our diet, and the families or the child has to have a genetic risk for it. And let's give people, before we talk about the personal impact that it has, some of the symptoms that we could look for if we suspect that our child might be developing a food allergy or an intolerance. Sure. So in terms of IgE-mediated food allergy, and I keep saying that word because that's the more immediate allergic reaction, it's not, you're not guessing. You give a child something to eat, and usually within a half an hour there can be hives, there can be throat um, clearing, uh, swollen lips, coughing, wheezing, vomiting. Y you kind of know that there's something going on. It, you're not wondering uh, that, you know, that there's not something going on. So that's a, an, an allergy, but then it can be even more severe than that. It, kids and adults so can stop breathing, their, their throats can close. They, exactly, they can that is that the kind worst. Of shock. Right, so they can have severe reactions where their blood pressure drops and they, like you said, they present in shock. And the medications that we have available to treat that are quite effective, but you still need to go to the emergency room and be evaluated. I have had those and it is very frightening. So for parents, that's why we wanted to do this show so that you can be aware of it. And for those of you who might hear about kids in your neighborhood or your schools or whatever that have an allergy, you need to take this seriously. We're going to invite you to be part of our conversation. We're asking if you have questions for the doctor regarding food allergies. We'd like to know if you or your child experiences it. And we'd like to know what kind of impact it has on your daily life if you are living with a food allergy. If you want to join in, you can email me directly. I'm at lynn at lynndoyle.net. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter. In fact, we invite you to follow me at Lynn Doyle TV. I want you to uh, meet a few other guests here that we have. Linda Mitchell is founder and senior director of Kids with Food Allergies, which is a division of the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America. Her organization educates families and communities with practical food allergy management strategies to save lives and to improve the quality of life for children and their families. And Michelle Casalia is the mother of 12-year-old James, who was diagnosed with food allergies when he was just 10 months old. She is also the Corporate Relations Director of Kids with Food Allergies. Ladies, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for, Thanks having, for having us. Thank you for shedding light on this subject, because I know that both of you have dealt with this with your children. Linda, you, for a very, very long time, food allergies have been part of your life for, what, two decades? Um, yeah, my son's 23 years old, and he developed food allergies as a baby when there weren't too many children around who had food allergies. So. I was left pretty much alone to figure out things. I had a wonderful allergist to work with, so between the good allergist and mm -hmm. just figuring things out, we were able to keep them safe and healthy. Like so many subjects that we've covered on this show, there was not a lot of resource back at that time to help you and to guide you and to mm -hmm. assist you and to tell you, hey, even support you, you're not crazy. How tough was it figuring out what was wrong with your son? It was really hard. Um, like I said, I had a wonderful allergist. There wasn't a lot of research being done. There weren't a lot of educational resources available for families raising children with food allergies. There was no internet. Mm -hmm. And so pretty much there was very limited information. Label reading was really tough and I used a lot of whole foods and just cooked things from scratch just to keep them safe. There are terms now that you're going to hear like label reading that you never paid attention to before, <laughs> but after this show you're going to. Flash forward to when Michelle has her son, which was 10 years ago, 12 years ago. Correct. He was just 10 months old yes. and he had his first allergic reaction. He did. Tell me about that. What do you remember about it? At when he was 10 months old, he touched peanut butter that was on the kitchen chair from his older sister, Kristen, and he immediately went into hives. Um, and I knew from reading different things, and I had been dealing with other issues, um, eczema and asthma, I knew um, that I I needed to take him to an allergist and I needed to get him tested. Now I know that there are people who are sitting at home saying, wait a minute, he didn't even eat it, he just touched it and he, he just had touched that severe the a reaction? And the hives went immediately up his arms, yes. Now did he ever experience any other allergic reactions he to did. other foods or was it strictly to the peanut butter? No, he was allergic to many different um, allergens, milk, he was allergic to rice, to eggs, to peanut. Um, he had his um, 
When he was two years old, he had an anaphylactic reaction to peanuts, and it was then that I, that it was a very emotional and scary time, but my aunt had to give him the auto injector, the epinephrine auto injector at the that EpiPen time. The EpiPen as it's known. Um, yes. Right. So for, I'm trying to simplify yes. it for the folks yes. at home. So yes. it is very scary when you have that anaphylactic reaction because you think that they have stopped breathing, if I mm -hmm. recall when it's happened to me. I do have to take a quick break, but if you have a question about food allergies, please email me during the break. We're going to try to give you some answers. Remember, I'm at lynn at lynndoyle.net. Stay with us because we have more information for you that can be very helpful for your children or your grandchildren or even for yourself. Food allergies among children have become so common now that some schools are prohibiting snacks from being brought in or they ban birthday parties for fear of deadly allergic reactions. We're asking you what you think of these decisions as we talk about killer food allergies. If you'd like to join in, you can email me at lynn at lynndoyle.net. You can also respond to our questions on Facebook or you can follow me on Twitter. And I pose that question because so many times now you hear someone say, oh, I can't send in peanut butter or cookies or certain things to school because there is one child in the school that has a problem with it. There's a reasoning behind that. Can you explain what it is? Uh, yeah, the biggest reason, especially with peanut butter, is it's very sticky and it's hard to remove from surfaces. And the risk to young children, especially, who have a habit of putting their hands in their mouth is that they touch it and then they inadvertently put their hands in their mouth and that protein but the peanut protein will actually trigger a reaction in these children. So that's really the main reason why we have to be so careful with some of these food allergens in classrooms. And it's not just that. It, it could be that kids want to share and mm -hmm. unwittingly might share something that the other one doesn't realize he or she is allergic to. Mm -hmm. Is that fair to say? That Especially when you're dealing with little kids? Yeah, I think... You know, we... I personally am not a big proponent of a, quote, peanut-free school. <laughs> Sorry, uh, because there are children who have milk allergy, wheat allergy, and you're never mm -hmm. going to get milk and wheat free schools. So I think education is really important. I mean, I don't know about what Absolutely. you guys think. Absolutely. And I do think with birthday parties, holiday parties, when we grew up, we always had food. I don't know if you necessarily need food. I think that a parent can bring in a special book or a craft project mm -hmm. or something like that. It was actually one of the questions that came through on Facebook for us and after your comment about your son uh, just touching it and having that reaction, it's caused some controversy, but if there's a chance that one child could be injured or become ill, do you think it's, it's worth putting a ban on that kind of thing? Well, I know right now they've eliminated all snacks and birthday treats in the school district that my school goes to. And I, and I don't know the reasoning behind it all, but it's not really an issue anymore. I mean, for birthday treats, you have to bring in something, I don't know, pens mm -hmm. or something like that. <laughs> oh, it's just not the same. It's not the same. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I have to say it's gotten easier for us yeah. food allergy parents. There's right. just not as much to deal with as far as the birthday treats and the special snacks. The and other everything. thing is, is that with wellness policies and the increased risk of obesity in children, that it, it's smart to not have the sugary, calorie laden treats in classrooms and to find other ways to celebrate, create new traditions Until instead. Until someone becomes allergic to apples. <laughs> I have some questions for the doctor, so let's go through those. This one says, quote, I'm expecting and both my husband and myself have several food allergies. Should I expect my baby to have them and how early can I test her to find out? That mm -hmm. is a really good question. So, but we don't have all of the answers. So I don't know if her baby would have a food allergy. And the problem is you don't really want to test before somebody has a reaction, which sounds crazy, but the tests are not perfect. They're great if you've had a reaction, but they're not great if you haven't. And what that means is that you can have what's called a false positive test. So a test that says you may be allergic, but four out of 10 times it's wrong. Okay, and then that leads us into this next question, which reads, are food allergies genetic? Does that make sense, that if your parents have them, that you are likely to have them? We actually see a fair amount of children whose parents don't have food allergies, um, but have some sort of allergies. So we think that it's part of an allergic uh, triad where kids can have eczema, then they can have food allergies, then they can have asthma and seasonal allergies. So the parents themselves often will have 
seasonal allergies or asthma. I don't know about you if that's, you have mm -hmm. any of those. Yes, <laughs> that's actually <laughs> Absolutely. It's interesting because that's <laughs> another question that I've uh -huh. gotten is whether or not they're related if most kids who have food allergies actually end up having other issues as well like asthma mm -hmm. or eczema um, or other difficulties. And I, I noticed that you guys are all associated with food allergies and asthma. So that's do, the, do the two come hand in hand typically? Um, yes, um, eczema, food allergy, and uh, often children will start out with eczema and then they'll develop food allergies and develop asthma later. Um, Dr. Brown Whitehorn probably can speak more about that with authoritativeness than I, but um, the important thing about food allergies and asthma is that asthma presents an additional risk to children who have food allergy because it, if the asthma is poorly controlled, the reaction to a food if it's an allergic reaction can be much more severe. And most of the fatalities that have occurred in children with food allergies and teenagers and young adults have been in asthmatics. It's interesting that we put up the food allergy symptoms. The children might communicate their symptoms in these following ways. It feels like something's poking my tongue because, you know, when we think about it, they're just wee ones. They're not, you know, 10 year olds necessarily right. having their first reaction. So they, they yeah. might be saying something that we have to decipher and understand what they're trying to communicate. My mouth feels funny, there's a frog in my throat, something stuck in my throat, my lips feel tight or my tongue feels full. Yeah, so you have to listen to those things. Some of the little ones actually will have the food in their mouth and actually spit it out. Mm -hmm. Like they eat regular food that they're fine with, but as soon as they get a bite of a scrambled egg, they spit it out. Um, and some of those children go on to develop food allergies or have food allergies to egg. This may sound really silly, but do kids like foods that they're allergic to? Like you mentioned the eggs. Is it necessarily something they always dislike? I don't think they always dislike it, but they don't tend to like it. Oh, okay. um, my son continues. Um, he grew out of his milk and egg, and he will still, at 12 years old, not drink milk. And he, will, he can't even stand the smell of peanut butter. So. Yeah. Do you, will he? There's an association. I was just going to say, does he like an, an image? Um, he's beginning to like cheese. It's yeah. a slow process. Yeah, some mm -hmm. of the kids I've seen either like cheese or they like mm -hmm. a little bit of ice cream if they've outgrown their food out. But he will still spit out milk if we tell him to try it. So <laughs> <laughs> just keep trying. Yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned earlier, and we got a, a question about this, that your son, when he was quite young, um, went into anaphylactic shock. Yes. Can you explain for us what that is and, and from a mother's perspective, what it was like to experience that? It was a very scary experience. Um, I still get emotional thinking back to it, even though it was many years ago. And I have to say that I froze. I, um, I, I hesitated. I called the allergist and he said, Michelle, give the EpiPen immediately now. And luckily my aunt, who was a nurse, a registered nurse, was standing there saying, are you going to do it? And I just, I froze and, you know, he, James was screaming and my aunt just took the EpiPen and jammed it right, right into his thigh. thigh. Yep. So he was screaming. It's not he like was crying. He, he yes. was he was yes, out of in breath the eyes. Or not breathing. And or. our just just said, "Go for it, Michelle." And I. It's, it's hard. Though. It was really hard. It, it was hard. very have hard a lot to do of when they're that little. Yeah. Yes. They have a new epinephrine auto injector that tells you how to use it. It talks to you, and the the thing that I think that what we need is something inside that auto injector that says give it now <laughs> and this is right, how you yeah, do it right. because we have so many calls not a lot but we have a fair amount of calls where we think as physicians or nurses um, that go ahead and give it and there's just something that as a parent you're so scared sometimes they just can't do it but mm -hmm. oftentimes we've talked them through it and they've given it like well, that lady in our GPS that says turn left turn left yes. turn left yes. now yeah, <laughs> we need exactly. the epipen that says do it do it do it yeah. now yeah but or I, you I have, can do it I have to say though once you've given it it's a very empowering feeling and you feel more confident about using it afterwards I can speak for myself and other people with whom I've spoke that feel the same way and usually the good thing is if you give it and um, the children feel better pretty darn quickly. Oh, so yes. there's Dramatic. often an immediate, within seconds, they start to feel better. Mm -hmm. The highs may last a little while longer, but yes. the breathing issues. Yes. 
very good information. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, but we have some more of your questions that we are going to pose to the panel. If you'd like to join in or perhaps share an experience that you have, you can email me during this break. I'm at lynn at lynndoyle.net. Stay with us. We're back in two minutes with more important information. Welcome back to It's Your Call, everyone. I'm Lynn Doyle, and our topic today, killer food allergies. And the reason that we're talking about it, you know the holidays are upon us. In fact, any month of any year, there's always a holiday coming up where we're eating, right? So we wanted to make you aware of these food allergies that are apparently growing in the number of people who are impacted by them. If you have questions or comments, or if you're one of those who's discovered that your child or your grandchild or even yourself is now allergic to a certain kind of food, we'd like to hear what kind of impact it has on you on a regular basis. We've offered you the opportunity to ask Dr. Brown Whitehorn some questions from CHOP. So let's go back to our um, question board and see what you have to, what you're interested in. This one says, is it true that you can grow out of food allergies and how do you find out if that's true if you don't want to risk an attack? <laughs> that's, that seems like a really smart question. It's a great question. So it, when somebody comes to see us who has food allergies, what we'll do typically is do allergy skin testing. And if by chance the skin test turns negative over time, then most likely the child or the person has outgrown that food allergy. If the skin test stays positive, or if it's been years since you've had a reaction, we actually bring the children into the hospital and they do what's called a food challenge. You have to eat the food, though. You have to eat the food. <laughs> Doesn't sound, sound like Michelle's son James is up for that. Yeah. He's like, no, no, thanks. I can live without peanut butter and milk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now this one says, does your body really change every seven years? I've heard that you can become allergic to something that you always enjoyed before. So this is kind of a reverse question. It's not whether you grow out of them, but whether you can actually grow into them. So we don't see that a lot. Well, of course, on pediatrics, but in in the adult world, <coughs> patients can have tolerated nuts before and then have a problem, or they can have tolerated shellfish before and then have a problem. The other issues, the gluten sensitivity, that's a little bit separate than anaphylaxis. Boy, we didn't even talk about gluten, did we? And we don't have enough time to do it now, but that's a, a term that everybody's been talking about mm -hmm. now, and we're hearing mm -hmm. more and more about it. What do you say to parents who are experiencing this for the first time in terms of getting support or finding resource? It's very overwhelming when your child is first diagnosed uh, because you're trying to figure out how to feed them safely while you're also trying to keep them safe. And so getting the right resources initially are very, very important. And that's one of the reasons why our organization, Kids with Food Allergies, exists because we want to give practical food allergy management resources to the parents. Well, it's a great organization. I'm glad that we were able to um, highlight it on the show today. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Michelle, for sharing your personal story. Sure. Finally, is there research being done with this so that perhaps food allergies will become a thing of the past? We hope so. So it's very exciting to be a physician now. Ten years ago when we would see children who had food allergies, we would say you have to avoid the food, you have to read labels carefully. Nowadays, there's research into try and change somebody's immune system. So instead of having an allergic reaction, they don't. So we're involved in some exciting food trials at Children's Hospital in our food center uh, with milk, egg, and peanut. So it's pretty cool. The problem is to enroll in those studies, the children have to have an allergic reaction first so we know <laughs> where they start, and then we can do things to help. That's kind of like that catch-22. <laughs> you exactly. have to eat it and get sick to get better. <laughs> I'm not well, sure. When we actually started a study, um, I didn't think we'd get enough people and we had more than enough. All right. Well, if you are interested in more information, please email me and I will make sure that our guests get your requests and your comments. I'm at lynn at lynndoyle.net. Until the next time, my thanks to my crew and to you for watching. Have a great night. We'll see you the next time.